so hello everyone uh, welcoming you to shore of Sus classes so today we are going to discuss question number 21 of tac 2021 paper so the question says that suppose that the market for pizza is perfectly competitive with the constant long run marginal cost if there is a perfect uh, sorry if there is a per unit sales tax on pizza then which of the following is correct Producers will bear tax burden, consumers will bear the tax burden, equal share ins, and it will depend upon the shape of the demand curve. So, let us have a look at it in a graphical manner. We can get to the answer quite easily. So, let's say we have a standard negatively sloped demand curve over here. Then we have a marginal cost curve. Marginal cost curve. So from this you can understand that this is the consumer surplus, right? This is the equilibrium, this is the price, and this is the quantity. That is um, demanded and supplied in the comparative market. So over here note that the producer surplus is zero and the consumer surplus is the area of the triangle shaded triangle so the consumer surplus is the shaded area okay. now they are saying that suppose there is a per unit tax so what will happen the marginal cost curve will shift up to mc plus t so now you can understand so this is the market price and the quantity becomes q2 so the market price rises to p2 and the quantity falls to q2 okay so now you can see that this part is the only consumer surplus now so the consumer surplus falls right the gap between these two is the tax rate and this amount is transacted so this is the tax revenue that the government collects right the producer surplus continues to be zero so this is the pre-tax situation this is the post-tax situation the producer surplus continues to be zero and this part this triangle is the dead weight loss so now let's compare producer surplus was initially zero continues to be zero and the consumer surplus only falls so the entire burden of this introduction of tax is borne by the consumers itself because producers earlier have they were having a surplus of zero they are still enjoying that zero surplus whereas the consumer surplus has fallen and we have a deadweight loss over here so it will be option number two consumers will bear the entire burden of tax so this is question number uh, 21 and my option is two Okay, so coming back with question number 22 of the DSC 22, uh, 2021 paper. So the question says, suppose a monopolist produces oil in one factory but sells it to two cities. So it is essentially the case of the multi-market monopolist. In each city, the monopolist faces the same inverse demand curve, P as a function of Q, and F is strictly decreasing and concave. So let us write down the information. So city 1, let's say, has market 1. The demand function is P as a function of Q, F prime negative, and F double prime is also negative. Correct. And for market 2 also, the demand function is the same. P is a function of Q, F prime negative, F double prime is also negative. Right? Cost is increasing and convex in quantity. That means the cost function. So first of all, in market one, 
the monopolist sends an amount q1 in market 2 the monopolist sells an amount q2 the cost is a function of the total output which is q1 plus q2 c prime positive c double prime is also positive okay and it is given that uh, g sells q1 units in city a and q2 units in q uh, city b where q1 is less than q2 which one of the following choices will increase her profit this is what the question is so initially so in in the initial situation with this the monopolist is now selling q1 which is less than q2 and now the question is what should be the new um, strategy so that profit can be increased that means naturally the monopolist is not uh, working at the equilibrium output because if that was the case then he would have made the maximum possible profit so let us now understand what the profit function of the monopolist looks like. It will be basically the total revenue minus the total cost. So from market 1, he will be earning R1, which is a function of Q1. From market 2, he will be earning R2, which is a function of Q2, minus the total cost, which is a function of Q1 and Q2. So what will the monopolist do? He will try to choose Q1 and Q2 to maximize i correct how are we going to do that we are going to take the partial derivative of pi with respect to q1 so we are getting del r1 by del q1 minus del c by del q into del q by del q1 equals to 0 now note that this term del q by del q1 is equals to 1 right so what we will get del r1 by del q1 is equals to del c by del q that means the marginal revenue from market 1 which is a function of q1 is equals to the marginal cost correct and now coming to market 2 so the similar calculation follows del pi by del q2 is equals to del r2 by del q2 minus del c by del q into del q by del q2 is equals to 0. So that is del r2 by del q2 is equals to again this part is 1. So this will become del c by del q. So the marginal revenue from market 2 should be equals to the marginal cost. So if we combine both of them, combining, this is how the equilibrium condition should look like. MR1 equals to MR2 is equals to MC. This is how the equilibrium condition should look like. Now just clarifying this part, what is MR1? Do you remember this? This can be easily written as this. 1 minus 1 times mod of ep we can simply write this down just to have a recap now what is revenue it is simply the price times the quantity right what is price it is essentially a function of q what is marginal revenue in general del r by del q so what do you get you get f of q plus q times del f of q by del q right correct so just if i write this as p so this is del p by del q so if you take the p common so it becomes 1 plus q by p del p by del q okay so what does this become take a minus common so minus of q by p del p by del q now this part over here in the first bracket is essentially 1 by the absolute elasticity of demand so this basically becomes p into 1 minus 1 by mod of p right so i'll just use this result over here and similarly what is mr2 it will be p2 times 1 minus 1 by mod of ep correct 
Note that the elasticity is the same in both the cases because the demand functions are the same. So what does MR1 equals to MR2 imply? P1 P1 into 1 minus 1 by mod EP is equals to P2 times 1 minus 1 by mod EP. So these terms will get cancelled out. So what do you have? P1 is equals to P2. That means at optimal, the monopolist will charge the same price in both the cities. So now what is the given demand function or inverse demand function? It is price is a function of Q, right? So what will be the quantity that they will sell? It's is this the inverse F inverse P, right? Therefore, as prices are the same, that means the quantities that should be sold in both the markets should be the same, right? So now let's have a go look at the options. That means in order for the produce monopolist to maximize his profit, he should charge the same price in both the cities and go in for selling the same quantity in both the cities. This is the profit maximizing level of price and output. Now let's have a look at the options. The first option says sell Q1 plus Q2 units in city B and nothing. No, this is absolutely wrong. Sell Q1 plus Q2 units per month in city A and nothing. This is also wrong. Sell Q1 plus Q2 by 2 per unit in each city. Yes, this is the right option. Because that, look at this one. You, you should, should sell equal amount in both. So, what, what is Q1? This, this is the amount that he produces for city 1. And what is Q2? This is the amount that if he produces for city 2. So, what is the total production? It's Q1 plus Q2. Okay. So, if he has to sell it equally, then what will he do? Half of it, Q1 plus Q2 divided by 2 will go to city A. And the rest half of it, Q1 plus Q2 divided by 2 will go to city B. So, the option is for this question is option 3. So, question number 22, the option is 3. Thank you.